Okay, so let's just get into the lesson. So the reason why I asked about your favorite weather is because we're going to be looking at climate a lot today. So let's just get right into it. Agenda for the day. We're going to be starting off with a Kahoot, then going into a lecture, and then we're going to be doing a quizies at the end. So Kahoot time. Oh no, that is not play. Okay. There we go. All right. Um, okay, cool. I'm impressed at the rate that Claw BB joined. Very impressive. Oh, you said you speed ran. I, I didn't even read that. But yeah, very impressive. Okay, getting more people. It takes me an hour to memorize six numbers. Wait, okay. The music is on, so I guess I just need to share with audio. Oh, share sound. It takes you a long time to uh, memorize six digit numbers. I mean, do 80s. Like, <laughs> six digit numbers. <laughs> six digit numbers. Uh, I'm talking about something I really shouldn't be. I do not get what you're referencing right now. I don't think I want to get it. is I only have to remember it for like five seconds and since there are multiple repeating numbers it makes it a lot easier. Example 88. Getting getting wisdom. Oh no, who hates this class? Wow. Pick the person. Pick that person. Should I kick? Say yes in the chat if you want me to kick this person. <laughs> That's a lot of guesses. Who said no? Whoever said no, I know who you are. Alan. Oh, dang. That's a lot of guesses. Okay. Unfortunately, this is a dictatorship and not a democracy, so I will not take that person. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna start then, since we're not getting more people. Never mind, we just got one more. Why did we just get like a bunch of people? Okay. Okay, I'm gonna start now. This is week four. Wow. All right, guys, I believe in you. Lock your inner fossil to God. Nice, nice, nice. Nice. Oh, I joined late. Oh, you're good. We're just playing a Kahoot. The game pin should be in the bottom right. No, never mind. I just clicked out of it. Oh. Oh, okay, there we go. Should be on the bottom right. So just join. Are we gonna have a Kahoot at the end? We're gonna have another game at the end. We're gonna be doing a crazy. So you can just wait for that if you want. Who's on 
one is kind of vague. Oh, nice. Very pleasant like surprise. Hey, Angelina, I see you. Nice. Sedimentation, you need to remember that that's not an actual chapter. This one I think is a bit hard. Yeah, okay, so higher pH levels means that the water is more basic, but it actually got more acidic, so that's lower pH levels. Plateosaurus is a dinosaur that we'll look at today. Come on, guys, this is what we're learning today. I believe you know. Yeah, okay, so dinosaurs ruled the Mesozoic. Metazoids are not things. Thank you, Dinosaur Train. Okay, six digit numbers in third. On be the second. Oh, eight out of nine. Who is this mysterious person? Okay, good job, Grace. Good job to the runner ups and everyone. Very proud. Um, so let's jump into the boring part. Uh, in case you're wondering what six digit numbers are, um, just ask a weeb. They'll give you an answer real quick. Moving on. I'm very confused, but okay. So jumping into the lecture for today. What is the Mesozoic era? So the etymology of Mesozoic means middle animals. And so the Paleozoic was like old animals or like old life. And then, so it lasted from around 250 to 65 million years ago. It involves the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous periods, and it has the last two mass extinctions out of the five throughout geologic history, the Triassic, Jurassic, and the Cretaceous tertiary. Um, so I have no idea what's happening in the chat, but anyway, so um, the climate that characterized most of the Mesozoic era is like a very warm climate. And so what the plates of the earth actually looked like during the time is that we have our supercontinent Pangaea at the beginning and then Laurasia and Gondwana at the end, which split during the Jurassic. It started to split during the Triassic and then fully split during the Jurassic. Um, and then it started splitting further all the way into the continents we know today. So obviously, probably the most key thing about the Mesozoic era is that it's the time where dinosaurs lived. They were basically like the rulers of the earth. Um, and for plant life, they were dominated by ferns, cycads, ginkophytes, and other unusual plants. And we also got our first angiosperms or flowering plants. So the first period of the Mesozoic, what is the Triassic period? It lasted from around 252 to 201 million years ago. Um, so Pangaea, the supercontinent, started splitting late Triassic, and so its dinosaurs were the animals that dominated the sea. So dinosaurs are split into two major groups, Saurischia and 
another one that I can't pronounce, but we'll look at later. Um, so this order is called lizard hipped, and we'll see why later. So uh, two major reptile groups that surround that survived the Permian-Triassic mass extinction were therapsids, which include mammals and their ancestors, and archosaurs, which are basically just a fancy name for reptiles. So uh, some key dinosaurs during this area, Coleophysis and pterosaurs, which evolved from archosaurs. They were pretty key players in the Triassic period. We also got our, our first mammals during the Triassic period. So what specifically are ichthyosaurs? So the name ichthyosaur comes from Greek for fish lizard. As you can see, it looks like a fish, but it also looks like a lizard, hence why it is called fish lizard. So they are large extinct marine reptiles. And so their level of taxonomy is order. So can you guys name all the levels of taxonomy from biggest to smallest? The first one who does that gets a virtual high five. Okay, I'll start off. Okay, so the largest is domain and the smallest is species. Okay. Phylum is indeed somewhere. Okay, are we stuck at phylum? Okay, but basically, yes, genus is also somewhere in there. You know, order is also somewhere in there. Class. And species. Okay, so we have all of the. Yes, genus is before species. So domain, kingdom, and genus species. Those are the two on the opposite ends of each other. No, it is not class before genus. Genus. All right, so you guys have order, class, and phylum to place. So domain, kingdom, and then those three, and then genus species. You guys can also utilize Google if you want. They start typing. Uh, phylus is after kingdom. Yep, that's right. Oh, phylum. So domain, kingdom, phylum, and then you have order and class. Class, class yes. order, family, genus, species. Wait, I totally forgot that family was a thing. But yeah, okay. So good job to uh, William. So it's domain, kingdom. I only phylum. figured that out because I had you. All right. Domain, kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, genus, species. So yeah, that's the level of taxonomy. So you can see that Ichthyosauria lies in order. Um, it was one of the key predators that ruled the sea as dinosaurs ruled the land. So they were like apex predators. So what is order Sericea? So again, as I said, it's one of the two major groups of dinosaurs and its etymology is lizard hip. So like most reptiles during this time, actually today too, the pubis bone points down and forward. So when we get to the other group of major dinosaurs after that slide, there will be a slide comparing the two so you can see visually what the hip bone actually does look like. Oh, I just got it like off of Google, so. Cool, that's very cool. So um, a major group in order Sericea is theropods. So they are bipedal carnivores. So that means that they travel on two legs and eat meat. So 
Some notable dinosaurs from the theropod category include Coleophysis, Spinosaurus, Allosaurus, Velociraptor, T-Rex, and Dilophosaurus. So in the top left, we have Coleophysis or Coleophysis, and then if you go all the way to the left in the top row, that's Allosaurus and the Velociraptor in the bottom left and Dilophosaurus in the bottom right. So. Okay, so um, next part, another major group in order Sauritia are sauropods. Um, all right, guys. So um, they had long necks, long tails, small heads, four thick pillar-like legs, and they were probably the biggest so they were the biggest dinosaurs that was alive during this time. So, I think there was a dinosaur that when he like squished his tail could break the sound barrier. That is very impressive. I did not know about that. Do you know what dinosaur it is? No, but you can search it up on Google. That's probably true. I'll search it up after class and tell you guys about it next time. It might be, yeah. So the one on the left is Brachiosaurus, the one in the middle is Diplodocus, and Patagonidan on the right. So what are pterosaurs? So it's also another order like Ichthyosauria, order Pterosauria, and they are the earliest vertebrae to evolve flight and as you guys probably know there were flying reptiles and so so you need to remember Ichthyosauria, Ichthyosaurus were in the sea, dinosaurs on land, pterosaurs in the sky. So moving on to the Jurassic period, the middle period of the Mesozoic era. It was around 201 to 145.5 million years ago, and during this time, supercontinent Pangaea fully split into Laurasia and Gondwana. We got our first bryophytes and gymnosperms, which if you guys have no idea what it is, it's okay, we'll look at in the next slide. And then the other major group of dinosaurs, order Ornithischia, I think that's how you pronounce it, evolves. So we have a lot of sauropods and ther theropods during this time. Some brief dinosaurs that we looked at in the last few slides. These examples, or these are examples of some of the sauropods and ther theropods that were really predominant. Um, we also have small herbivore and insectivore mammal, mammals evolving a lot. So like, yes, things that resemble rodents. Um, and then we also have plesiosaurs, which are another key player in the ecosystem of the sea during this time that dominated along with ichthyosaurs. So what are bryophytes and gymnosaurs? So there are 10 major groups of land plants, which are called embryophytes. And so Bryophytes are in an informal group with the three of those 10 that are non-masculine. And these include liverworts, hornworts, and mosses. And so basically they all like were limited in size because they didn't have transport tissues. So they couldn't carry water or like nutrition up their like xylems and phloems because they didn't have any. So that's why they preferred living in moist environments so they could get this water directly. And so were pretty like not that tall pretty flat I'm sure you guys all know what mosses are but yeah they just generally look like that um and then gymnosperms so the etymology of gymnosperm is naked seed and this is because their seeds develop without like a covering and so their seeds actually develop on the surface of scales or leaves or they're modified as cones, like in pine cones. So these plants include conifers, cycads, ginkgo, and nettophytes. So 
they are one of the major two groups of seed bearing plants. The other one is angios. If you will look at the here. So, what is Order Ornithischia? So, it's the other two, the other major group, the other, yeah, the other major group of the two major groups of dinosaurs. And it means bird hipped. So, instead of pointing up and forward or down and forward, it point, their pubis points down and backwards. And so, in general, Dinosaurs that fall into this order include the Ankylosaurus, the Triceratops, Protoceratops, Iguanodon, Stegosaurus, and Triceratops. Or sorry, not Triceratops. Dracorex. I did not read that correctly. Um, but yeah, you can see the general difference in their stature. They seem to be a lot more stable on their feet. Yeah, Dragorax is my Science Olympiad fossil partner's favorite dinosaur. So, here you can see the actual major difference of the two dinosaurs. So, as you can see in the first image, the pelvis points forward, or sorry, the pubis points forward instead of backwards. So that would be the major difference and what people classify the two, di the two major groups of dinosaurs as. So the pelvis of an ornithischian actually resembles that of a bird, whereas the cerishian pelvis resembles that of a lizard. So. What are plesiosaurs? So again, it's another order, order plesiosauria, and the etymology of it um, in Greek means near to a lizard. So it dominated the Jurassic, starting the Jurassic period along with ischiosaurs, and it disappeared during the Cretaceous tertiary extinction as along with most other animals that we've looked at so far. So it had a really distinctive build. It had a broad and flat body, as you can see. It had a very short tail and four long flippers that evolved from the four limbs, also a key predator in the sea. So, what is the Cretaceous period? The Cretaceous period lasted from 145.5 to 65.5 million years ago, and we got our first angiosperms. So, Angiosperms are flowering plants, and we believed to have gotten them from co-evolution. So plants evolved along with the insects that pollinated them. So they found that they could spread their seeds further if they evolved pollen, which is a key feature of how angiosperms actually reproduce. So during this time, the avians, such as pterosaurs, dominate the sky. They are very key because they also aren't affected that much as the other dinosaurs and animals of what happens on land, which is why they were pretty dominating. So um, other, other dinosaurs that also ruled the land were Iguanodon, Inclusaurus, Triceratops, basically all the dinosaurs we looked at already. And the climate was very warm at this time. So what are angiosperms? So angiosperms are vascular plants, one of the two groups of seed-bearing plants whose seeds are found in flowers or fruit. So they have some kind of covering over the seeds, which is unlike in those sperms, which have bare seeds. So they need pollination and pollen to reproduce, which is why they also co-evolved along with insects that pollinate. Um, so they would go on to dominate the Cenozoic. Yeah, they're just flowers. Um, so some examples of angiosperms that are really abundant in fossils are maple, aspen, poplar, and sycamore. And the one you see in the right would be a maple leaf. 
or genus Acer. So what are avians? So as I said before, avians were really key in the Cretaceous period, and they are generally today called class avians, which are modern birds. So some of their key defining characteristics are hollow birds, sorry, hollow bones, large air sacs, and flattened ribs that allow their wings to attach. So obviously all of these characteristics have come from millions of years of evolution to help them become more optimal for flight. And so the earliest, oldest bird-like fossil found is of genus Archaeopteryx. So it's a really famous fossil from the Lagerstatt of Holman limestone, which we'll look at next week. And the Lagerstatt is just basically a fossil site. So what is the Mesozoic Marine Revolution? So the Mesozoic Marine Revolution stems from lots of new predators forming during the Mesozoic that could crush the shells of invertebrates. In the Paleozoic, there were less of these predators because they were more complex and thus they didn't evolve the mechanisms to actually bore and, and destroy the shells. So this resulted in like basically an evolutionary race. So crinoids, they lost their stocks, they became motile, they could move to escape predators. Shells became infaunal as instead of epifaunal. So epifaunal means that a shell's mode of life is on top of the seafloor, whereas infaunal means buried inside the seafloor. There was also less suspension feeding for the reason that if you stayed in one place, predators could literally just swim right up to you. So the ocean floor started to become more modernized as you started finding more organisms within it and less on top of it. So my favorite fossil, I really like the Diplocolis. I think it's really cool. Um, I also like my Diplocolis. So what is the Cretaceous tertiary extinction or KT extinction? And so, other names for it include Cretaceous Paleogene or KPG. This is because the tertiary period is actually no longer a period that people actually use, and it's been split into the Paleogene and Neogene. So, it happened around 66 million years ago, and during this time, 75% of all life forms went by then. So, uh, no tetrapods, which means no, you're not wrong. So, no tetrapods, which means organisms on four legs, more than 25 kilograms survived, except ectotherms, which include like turtles and crocodiles. And all dinosaurs except avians died, and so these dinosaurs would go on to become verbs. So, um, it also served as a boundary between the Mesozoic and Cenozoic era, and so the Alvarez hypothesis is probably the reason behind the KT extinction that you've probably heard about. Um, basically, he hypothesized that a comet hit, and the effects of this comet led to... Is this like the day that the dinosaurs died? What's that? Isn't this like known like the day of the dinosaurs died? I mean, like that makes sense. It probably is. But I don't I, think it was a comet that directly hit them and killed them. I think it was just like the effects from it. Yeah, you're right. So basically a comet hit, and obviously a comet is gonna isn't gonna be like big enough to wipe out everything but after the comet hit. Like, there was a lot of negative effects, so, like, there wasn't enough sunlight being reached to the Earth's ground. And also, people mostly accept his hypothesis, also knowing the fact that they actually found, like, a place that looks like a comet hit it. Okay, I don't think they died in a day. I think it was really gradual. 
I think it was over time. Yeah. So, but yeah, this comet is said to be like the, I guess, catalyst for this whole extinction. So, wouldn't it be a volcano though? I mean, it can be a volcano, but the thing is, there's less, I guess, evidence for volcanism being the most predominant factor in the KT extinction. I think people mostly accept the comet theory because there has been like volcanic eruptions before, but none with this, like the impacts that a comet would bring. Yeah, this is just like the most widely accepted hypothesis. So moving on, after the KT extinction happened, we are going to the Cenozoic era. So it started 66 million years ago to now. Um, yeah, okay, so it means new animal as so Mesozoic mean meant middle animal. Um, it's called the age of the mammals, but it could be called age of a lot of things, like flowering plants and insects, or age of the birds, not age of the insects of age of the birds. The age of people. That works too. So it's it was originally split into two periods, tertiary and quaternary, but the new geologic time scale has broken tertiary into two, paleogene and neogene. And paleogene comes first, which is why we also sometimes call it the KT extinction, the KPG extinction. So the early Cenozoic was very warm, like how it is today around the equator, but then it went through periods of the ice age as we know it. And then Mammals started evolving rapidly because after all the dinosaurs, and as you guys know, no tetrapods over 25 kilograms survived. So this gave way to mammals evolving. And so we also got less forest during this time, and there was more grassland and savannas. So this is just a general overview of the Cenozoic era. Epochs are also really important in this, and they haven't been as important in the older periods, but as we get more in depth with the Cenozoic era, you'll see that each of these epochs have significant things happening in them. So what is the tertiary period? It lasted from 66 to 2.6 million years ago, and it is classified by, or its boundaries are classified by the KT extinction on the older end and the ice ages on the most on the more recent end. So at the beginning, it was very warm, but then as the ice age came, it started to cool down more. So now it's split into two periods: the Paleogene, which lasted from sixty-six to two, twenty-three million years ago. So. The Paleocene is split into three epochs. During the Paleocene, we got our first primates. And so it's also called the age of the birds. This term carried to the Eocene where we got our first horses, whales, and giant birds, which is kind of cool. So, and then we- How big is a giant bird? How big do you think a giant bird is? Uh, bigger than us. I'd say it'd be more like an ostrich. What if what if the birds were the size of the mammoths? Then life would be really scary. Okay. So and then all you guys seen epoch. Um the land starts to cool. We got our first true carnivores, which meant like saber tooths and other predators. Someone said that they like terror birds. I also very much like terror birds. Okay, so and then we, got, we have our neogene period, 
23 to 2.6 million years ago. And that split into two epochs, the Miocene, where we got apes, primates, grasses, and grazing animals like horses and other cattle. And also we have Arctics that were covered with ice now. And so that brings us to the Pliocene epoch where we have our first modern animals and hominids, so human-like beings. So, what is the quaternary period? It lasted from 2.6 million years ago to now, today. And so it's characterized by glacial expansion with global warming happening in between. Also, another thing that you guys should remember, global warming during like geologic history when we're looking at it through the lens of a fossils person it's not human caused so when i say global warming here it's not like what we've done but yeah i can just right now but i thought it would be shorter to write zero million years ago so here we are um so the entire period is actually called the ice age so we're living in the Ice Age because there's a permanent ice sheet, which is Antarctica. We got a lot of big herbivores at the beginning, like mammoths and also big carnivores, like the saber tooth. So there's the Pleistocene epoch, which is characterized by repeated glaciations, the, the last of it, and then the Holocene, which is the end of the Ice Age, and where, when, the epoch we are living in now. So, what is the Anthropocene? It is a proposed new epoch, and the etymology is human new. And it's being used to describe the time period when humans started to have a significant impact on Earth, its climate, and its ecosystems. So, like, human-caused global warming. That would be a reason why we want the Anthropocene to be a thing. Um, I mean, that's debated. So we actually don't have a set date when it started because we're not sure like how big of an impact can be considered like, we're not sure how big of an impact we must have had for it to be considered a new epoch. And so most scientists say that we have to have had a significant enough impact so that the rock strata is changed, but it's been really heavily debated and that's why it's not a new epoch yet. All right, so now we are not going to be doing a gym kit because my gym kit was being weird. We are going to be doing a cuisine. So we will do a gym kit next. All right. Uh... Okay, never mind. I did something wrong. How do I? Hold up, I completely forget how you do teacher mode. Challenge friends, I'll try challenge friends. Um, wait, okay. How to play a quizzes? Why? Oh, okay. Wait. Um, okay, apologies. I am figuring out how to do this right now. In the meantime, you guys can talk about what your favorite fossil has been in the chat. How do you get to the quizzes website? Um, I think this quizzes.com. I 
pretty sure I have to find a live button. I forgot how you do that. No, okay. Okay, never mind. We got it. Um, wait. Okay, there we go. Do you guys want team or classic? Let me share my screen. Team. Team? Team. Classic. Team. You said we would do classic. Team. Team. Team doesn't work. Team is basically, it's people sharing the same, like, phone or website to use it. No, no that's, that's for, um, that's for. Oh, that's good. Uh -huh. Oh, never mind. Team. Okay. Um, okay, so now our class is going to be a democracy and we are going to do team. Wait, didn't we do team the last time? We did the courses. Yeah, we, we did, did team last time. Okay, so do you guys want to do classic then? Team, team. Classic, oh, team, please. team, team, team. You all are just absolutely team. sacrilegious. Okay, let's not be team. aggressive here. Okay, because... The team team seems more passionate. We're gonna be doing team. So I don't hear them calling sacrilege. Well, they are civilized. We need to remain civilized. Calling someone sacrilegious doesn't mean you're uncivilized. That is a fair point. But civilization, that is my only argument. In fact, if anything, calling uh, someone sac uh, calling something sacrilegious might actually be more civilized. Sounds good. Oh, it's the soaring penguins again. The dancing slugs, royal rats. I don't think a lot of people are like doing this today, so I only have one member on my team. Oh never mind. Yeah, some of you guys might have to uh solo it. So I'ma wait like two more minutes and then or sorry, one more minute, and then we can start. Meanwhile, I will look at all of the favorite fossils of you guys. Never mind, I just see a bunch of team. Yeah, I just have like one person on each team. Okay. My favorite fossil is amber. My favorite fossil is okay. True, okay, not gonna lie, this is kind of well, this is just kind of classic. Okay, I'm gonna start now. I did see yours. All right, guys, let's go.
not hear a thing because of all the music. Fair enough. I said the winner gets a prize that I will give next class. What kind of prize? That's for me to know and you to find out. You should just win. Okay, so quick recap of leaderboard. Morning Owls first, Grumpy Monkey second, Hurdling Turtles third, Floating Pigs fourth, Royal Rats fifth, Dancing Slugs sixth, sixth, and Soaring Penguins seventh. Wait, where is a Hurdling Turtles? Oh, there. Second. Okay, buddy. <laughs> question uh quickly uh, that's a good question I because if there isn't one then you could just sit there and oh, think about it for is. like no but there's a time limit okay so obviously you can't go asking google sama for help Be monkey take the lead. Nice. So, good job, everyone. I'm going to end it here. So...
Yeah, technology is very poopy. So who was Grumpy Monkeys? 